es, es tío, es súper chula, súper chula. Además tiene, la han quitado eh, la lengüeta y se mete como un calcetín. Ya, mucho mejor, a mí me cuesta un poquillo, eh. Sí, pues yo tengo la sensación de que me quedaba un pelín, un pelín más grande que el resto de Metcon que tengo. ¿Esa? Sí. Pero por el calcetín, porque es más elástico, ¿no? No sé, no sé. ¿Para algún tema? Bueno, ¿qué os parece el taxista que tenemos para la ocasión? Que conste que os ha ofrecido él, ¿eh? Mentira. Os lo hemos medio obligado. Sí, me han obligado, tío. No quieras quedar bien. Él se quería ir a entrenar y se ha visto obligado a, a llevarnos al aeropuerto. Llevo la mochila ahí. Oye, si en lugar de ir a Dubai nos vamos a... De fiesta. ¿De fiesta? Ah, sí. De fiesta. Con cinco botellas de Will Label. No es fiestero ni nada. Coach, que aún no te habíamos dicho nada personalmente, que nos vamos a Dubai. Estamos camino al aeropuerto. Yo también voy. Me llevan. Nos lleva haciendo de chofer y que no vamos a poder ir a la cena de CrossFit Pétulo pero que estaremos eh, en el evento de Dubai que espero que nos sigas vale. y que te guste nos vemos pronto vale. Vale. Estoy el mejor chándal el mejor chándal que tengo parece un pijama parece un pijama el traje de mecánico nos vas a echar de menos sí y vosotros a mí también, pero estaremos ocupados, entonces es más, se nota menos. Ya. Cuando eres tú el que te vas. en verano, manga corta, qué el frío que hace, joder. Viendo a los cracks del crossfit, ahí dejaste la piel en la competición. Graba, eh, tú. Graba, eh. Sí, seguro Graba, que eso, es tienes que, que decir. <risas> ya ya ves, ves, gira así todo el día con la cámara. Ya ves. Venga, va, iros, va, que los quiero ver. ¡Hala, venga, a tomar viento! Qué servicio, tío. ¿Señores? ¡Madre mía! ¿Señores? Lo propina, a ver. Sí. Encima Muchas para... gracias. Ay. Gracias, gracias. Pasarlo bien. Sí. Adiós, gracias. Pasarlo bien. Adiós. Another week, another day, another hour. Nos vamos, nos vamos aquí. No os enterado, ¿no? Aún. Lo primero de todo, como venimos con tiempo, ya sabéis que es una manía mía, después de haber pasado el control, como no puedes pasar líquidos, es comprar agua. Es muy importante que cuando viajemos estemos hidratados. Agua. Sí, no os penséis que voy a coger cualquier otra cosa, ¿eh? Nunca he entendido por qué no dejan, o sea, por qué no regulan el precio de las aguas, que es un bien básico en un aeropuerto. Yo no veo normal que una botella de agua valga 3 euros. Lo siento, ¿eh? Pero si quieres comprarte una Coca-Cola por 3 euros, parece fabuloso, porque es un capricho, pero agua. <risa> Segunda cosa, la primera del agua, la segunda, la comida. <ríe> Mi sobrino hace con el hora de comer, hace para que sepa que, que tiene hambre. Bueno, pues eso, la comida. Indispensable que te traigas un tupper antes de viajar. Uno, porque en el avión nunca sabes lo que te van a dar. Y es mejor que tú ya vayas con el estómago lleno por si acaso. Y dos, porque además sirve para acabar con aquellas cosas que te quedan en la nevera y que si no cuando vuelvas las ibas a tener que tirar seguramente. Yo me he preparado una ensalada. ¿Veis? La tortilla está encima, debajo está la ensalada. ¿Veis? Una ensalada de lechuga, zanahoria, calabaza... Eh, esto era aguacate, está puro. Y tortilla. Y aquí el aliño siempre aparte para que se mantenga mejor la, la ensalada. Y luego siempre te puedes acercar a algún restaurante y, y decirles, perdona, ¿me puedes dar unos cubiertos? Y te los suelen dar. Nunca me han dicho que no, entonces no sé. Porque claro, esto podría ser que en el control sí que te dijeran que cosas punzantes no te dejan pasar. Y ahora... Otra 
otro básico cuando viajamos primero es encontrarnos bien, o sea, sin esto no vamos a ningún lado. Hemos empezado por dentro, la comida, la bebida, y ahora eh, es fundamental estar cómodos y mantener una buena temperatura. Esto quiere decir viajar en chándal, esto siempre, o sea, yo a menos que coja un vuelo, que sea Barcelona, Madrid, Barcelona, Sevilla, me veréis siempre en chándal. Y llevar contigo unos calcetines. <risa> Hace mucho frío siempre en el avión. O sea, yo voy súper abrigada en los aviones siempre. Creo que no soy la única, ¿eh? pero también veo a gente que lleva bastante menos ropa que yo y me cuesta entenderlo. Pero para mí es básico llevar los pies calentitos. Y bien grandes los calcetines. Lo de las Metcon ya es algo más de postureo, ¿sabes? Porque. Uh. Eso ya va a gusto de cada uno, pero es que claro, crossfitero qué zapatillas tiene en casa, Metcon, pues ya está, con las Metcon que nos vamos a Dubai. Si cuando lleguemos allí ya te identifican, ¿sabes? Ya te ven con Metcon y dicen, eh, esta va allí, por lo menos va allí, que compita o no, quiere decir, pero que va allí, pues sí. A ver si me trabajas un poquito mejor, ¿eh? entonces algún día podremos probar en primera persona que es viajar. Madam, how are you? First Enjoy the flight. Good evening, sir. Welcome on board. How are you? First on your right side. Thank you. Esperando al wifi para decir a mi madre que estoy bien. Si tu madre no, no está despierta, tu madre. No, pero cuando se despierte lo primero que va a hacer va a ser mira mi madre. Se me ve bien o qué? Fresca como una rosa. Tampoco hemos dormido tanto. Desde que me he tumbado eran las 12 y a las 3 nos estaban despertando. O sea, después de tres horas reales de avión. Bueno, yo creo que la emoción nos mantendrá despiertos hoy. ¿eh? A la noche caeremos así como muertos, pero bueno. Estamos como aquel que dice recién aterrizados y ya hemos llegado directamente al hotel, también donde vamos a tener ahora una conferencia de prensa que nos van a guiar un poco sobre cómo va a ir la competición y así os entráis vosotros también. We have four athletes today. We should have one more. Do you all know who they are? Yes. That, that's one of the first questions I have. Um, <laughs> So in this group we have, with the exception of Kara, everyone has been here the last two years. Uh, and then, uh, Ben, you've uh, won last, last year. Uh, second, second, yeah. This is my first, second year. Yeah, second year. So that shows kind of, I think they've built a relationship with the event and they return. Kara, this is the first time has been here. We've been inviting her for a while. She turned up last this this year, and thanks for coming. Um, she plays second at the CrossFit Games this past year. Okay. Um, so we're very excited to have y'all this year for the first time. Um, this is my third time at the Dubai Fitness Championships. My first time was two years ago, um, and I came back just because the competitions run very very well. It's very enjoyable. I always have a good time here. Um, I think the events are really cool, uh, very different. They take us in different locations and treat us very well the whole time. Um, and I just really enjoy the UAE as well, uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi. It's like really cool, all the malls and everywhere you can go. Um, so there's a lot to do here other than just the competition too. So I enjoy Dubai. My turn. I'm Cara. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, this is my first time, like I said, I've been competing at the CrossFit Games for six years now. And um, this is my first time doing this competition. And as mentioned, I have been invited before. Um, there were two reasons that kind of prompted me to do it this time. One of them was my best friend Tommy moved over here at the start of the year. And I promised him that I would come and visit him. And I thought, if I didn't do it now, then I would couldn't see myself coming over so this was a perfect opportunity to come and see him and um, and see where he's coaching and kind of be involved in his new life and then um, I guess my last 12 months has just been so different and for a really long time I had not really been in a position that I was able to to grasp these opportunities and that was something that I really wanted to change this year 
obviously without sacrificing the work that I do for my CrossFit Games being my main priority. But I really wanted to um, be able to experience all of the amazing things that that come with um, this life that you know I've kind of been gifted in CrossFit. So I thought, um, why not do it now? And um, I've loved it so far. I spent a bit of time in Abu Dhabi, and then I came here. It's been amazing. Everyone was super welcoming, and. Um, I'm really excited to be put out of my comfort zone a little bit in an event like this at this time of year. Uh, how's it going? Travis Mayer, four times CrossFit Games athlete. Um, this is my second year at the Dubai Fitness Championships. Uh, last year was kind of an opportunity to come out here and experience it, which I told myself if I was able to come again, I definitely would because this is a once in a lifetime kind of opportunity and it's in Dubai and who wouldn't want else want to come here and hang out. Um, Kind of loved it from kind of stepping off the airplane, everything in the airport is pretty cool to look at and then you come out here and it's just a different world to see, um, definitely compared to the states and where I grew up, so I really loved it and excited to be competing again. Yeah. Um, ben Smith, uh, I've been doing this fitness stuff for a while. Uh, just, I've competed in the CrossFit Games nine times and this is my second time here for the DFC. And uh, I had a great time last year. I loved it. Um, it was very challenging, just like the CrossFit Games is every year. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Both of my brothers got to go with me last year. I had a good time. It was a great trip, and I'm really looking forward to competing this year. I just I like I like the challenge. I wanted to take advantage of any opportunities I could. And you know, my previous years, I didn't like to kind of go out of my bubble and try try other competitions or other things. I just focused on the CrossFit Games. So. As I approach kind of getting a little bit older, I want to be able to take advantage of these kind of experiences and really just enjoy it, have fun, and you know, compete hard. It just gives me another opportunity to do a tough competition in, uh, in my season. Uh, hello, guys. My name is Lucas Hogberg, and this is uh, my first time at the DFC. So I qualified last year, but I got some shoulder injuries, so I skipped it. Uh, I've been at the games three times. Uh, so excited oh, to comp compete against these guys, like uh, the top guys in the world. So I didn't make it to the games this year, so now I get a chance to do it again. Uh, so I'm super excited, and yeah, Dubai treats us uh, really well, and I feel super, super welcome. So I'm excited. Yeah. How does traveling around to these different places change your training regimen? I mean, we have to come to a place like this and stay here for a week, or if you're in Minnesota, or if you're in Miami, or wherever. Um, how does that affect your training and what you have going on as far as getting ready for your season? Um, I mean, me personally, um, I always have a very structured training and ever since the beginning when I've started with my coach and how we've approached competitions, there's a peak process and then there's a taper and then time off. Um, so coming into this, like the last three days was a little easier training and then travel. Um, landed at 4 a.m. Monday, yes, yesterday, right? It's Tuesday. <laughs> really confused on what day it is. Uh, then just did some like easy training, and then yesterday, and then today I'll do some more workouts, and then kind of get ready for tomorrow, and then taper off, and then get ready to head to Miami in January, which would be kind of the same thing, but doing a team aspect. So training won't alter too much just for that. Um, so for me personally, I just take some time off before and after. I think the structure is definitely really important. I know for me, pretty much. In Australia, everywhere we go is a pain. So, like, it's always far to get everywhere. Um, the thing that actually has saved me the most is I started working on my nutrition a lot at the start of the year and went towards that calculated method, so you know, your macros, your kind of thing. So, because I had something that was so calculated and so consistent, that weirdly I didn't expect it to be was the one thing that made traveling and changing time zones that much easier because it was like this one really consistent thing. It's yeah. so like that didn't change and if I had that consistent hit those numbers it was just something that my body didn't have to worry about and all of a sudden that seems to make like that transition a lot easier but otherwise you just have to kind of employ ways to keep your body like healthy like I know for, for us we travel like just 14 hours whatever to get here employ ways to you know stretch and mobilize and all that kind of stuff and and, and maintain some kind of structure um, for me personally I, I enjoy traveling um, I enjoy working out with people so normally when I travel I'll just do whatever program that that person is doing at that time um, we have an awesome group at our gym so we always train together and I just think training with the group is really really important um, 
what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, the hardest thing is just tracking the food. Yeah. Uh, traveling is like almost impossible to count your macros when you're at like places that don't have it. Um, so you have to get really good at like eyeballing things. Um, but yeah, just like leading up to competitions, it's super hard to track what you're eating and like how you're eating. But other than that, it's, it's fun training with people and doing what they're doing. And I feel like the time difference makes like a big change as well. Like that's the hardest part. For me, it's just like three hours from Sweden. So now I'm pretty happy for that. But other guys, I guess they have like some more hours. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's the hardest part for sure. Yeah. Yes, dinner time. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love traveling, but I mean, this was a you know. I, I don't love sitting on the airplane for an yeah. extended period of time. It really, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenge just to, you know, get out here and yeah. get ready to go and compete. But, I mean, me personally, I'd like this competition. I actually feel really good right now. Like, it's given me a chance to rest for the last three or four days, which I don't ever do. So, I mean, I'm kind of training. We're, like, we train all year really consistently, and we feel like, you know, at, at any time we could kind of roll into a competition, I like to kind of feel that way myself. So, you know, it's a good opportunity to come out here, rest a couple days, feel good, and then, you know, hit a good hard competition and then rest for a little while before the season comes up again, so, yeah. Since Matt Fraser and Sara are not here this year, I know all of you are such a good competitors, but how are you feeling about winning? <laughs> 